James Cadet part 6 here I'm doing the wiring you've seen me do this before it's just literally taking lengths of wire putting bullet connectors to each individual item but on this bike it's a bit of a mismatch the frame suggests that there should be a battery but the headlight switch suggests that there shouldn't it has the earlier headlight switch which ran directly off the magneto so I have to build a wiring loom that does a little bit more than the earlier version but not as much as the later version if that makes sense so here you can see me just connecting up the wires adding an extra circuit for the brake light and an extra power source for the horn that's earthed out through the handlebars but eventually I get there I also run a extra earth to the individual items like the tail light and the headlight instead of relying on an earth through the frame it turns out a far better way of keeping the current steady especially as it's direct from the engine but it didn't take long and eventually I got to the point where I was putting on the last of the bits and pieces here you can see me working out the clamp that holds the headlight in place it was missing of course and to, to find one of them on the internet and then wait for it to come my usual song I decided to make one I've got a strip of metal roughly the right thickness but a little too wide so you saw me there sanding it down to the right width I then folded over one end to 90 degrees this is to allow the clamp to bottom out before touching the headlight it's the same on most Lucas headlights So it's, as I say, just tapping over at 90 degrees. And it protrudes about 3 sixteenths of an inch. It's sometimes handier to fold over more than you need and then sand back rather than trying to bend over a very short tab. If you have a bit of length there, you get a bit of leverage on it. And then, of course, clean up the hammer marks and such. The other side is just angled up to grip the inside of the chrome rim. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Um, I'd say a 20, no more than 30 degree angle. Again, if you do it now, before you drill the hole and thread it, it makes life a bit easier. Then of course you cut it off to length. And you end up with a little piece like that. You then take that to the drilling machine, pillar drill, and drill a tapping hole for 2BA or 5mm would do if you haven't made any BA taps and dies. You drill the hole nearer to the 90 degree tab than to the 60. It adds a bit of leverage to the clamp itself. <coughs> but straightforward enough. At this point the rain is absolutely lashing down and the light has disappeared. With the hole drilled, you thread the hole to, as I say, either 5mm or 2BA. I think 2BA is more 4.5 than 5 as a direct comparison. Here you can see me cheating, I'm holding it square in, the, in an adjustable spanner. Needs must. And there we have the, the clamp, the little clamp. It's a simple job then to put it in the headlight. And 
push the headlight into place and tighten everything up. Getting it on nice and securely. I have rode a bike without these but the headlight kept popping off every time I hit a bump. And then a quick test to see if everything works. But at this point here I forgot I disconnected the battery. I'm using the battery to provide the power just in, because obviously the engine isn't running yet. I still haven't got the carburetor top. I can see myself end up making one of those as well. But everything works except the horn. That won't work on a direct current. It's an alternating horn. The horn is next. The mounting bracket is completely missing so I'll have to construct a little one get rid of the cable tie that just held it in position using the cardboard method of making a template literally just shape a bit of card to the shape of the bracket and then transfer all the dimensions to a, a strip of metal Again, nibbling away at the card until it fits nicely. If you're going to make any mistakes, it's best to make them on the card rather than go three quarters of the way through the bracket and then realise it ain't going to work. Locating the holes is easier as well. I'm just going to punch through the card to locate the holes. Again, the piece is cut out of a, a strip of mild steel. Here I'm sanding the curve that matches the radius of the horn body and then cutting off a triangular shape with a hacksaw just because I didn't want to change the sanding disc for a cutting disc. Then in vice grips it's all polished and rounded to shape, make it nice and tidy. Just take your time and make it look neat. Even if it takes a few minutes more, you end up with a nicely shaped bracket instead of a like a homemade piece. Here I'm using a file just to deburr the edges. Sometimes the sander rolls the metal over, leaving a burr. And then it's just um, put the bracket in place and bolt it up with two screws. quick nip up with the right screwdriver save rounding the heads off not very professional if you do that and then it's a bolt it into place a quarter bolt washer then the nut this will be taken off and painted so I won't put any thread lock on it right now and then just to finish the day I thought I'd put the handlebar grips on. I warmed them up with the hot air gun just to soften them a bit. But these are really good quality ones, they're nice and heavy. So they can take a bit of abuse. Tap them into place with a rubber mallet. A lot of people use hairspray to lubricate them, I didn't think it was necessary. Anyway, that's it for now. Thanks for watching.